So today we are with John Richards. He's the founder of Startup Ignition. He has mentored thousands of startups. He's also invested in what, two, 300 startups? It, um, well, about 85 directly and hundreds of others, obviously as a limited partner in seed and venture funds. What's your favorite investment right now that you're tracking? A hot company in Utah is Route. Okay. So I was the first investor in Route. Congrats. Um, and that was good. Um, and there's a number of, I, I, another one is four up four here up. in Utah. Okay. I was, I'm the only investor along with the tech accelerator that you and I co-founded okay. together as a shareholder in that still. And, uh, they've never, they bootstrapped it ever since and now are wildly successful and have like over 1500 golf courses they manage with their software. That's a lot. Yeah. All right. So the question for today is if I'm going to start a, uh, start a company, how do I not squander my money? Well, I would you know, take a look like this. If somebody came up and said, Hey, I'm about to quit my job and start my own company. Uh, what do I need to do or what do I need to be careful of? I like to make sure they understand the lay of the land and, and, you know, they've made a big decision there. And, uh, sometimes I tell them, Hey, slow down. Don't quit your job yet. Um, you have an interesting idea. You know, mm -hmm. when people tell me ideas, I instantly give them feedback. And if I tell them their idea sucks, which is the most common response, <laughs> it's, I tell them Your the reasons ugly. Yeah. I tell them why I say, I say, here's the reason it sucks. This, this, and this, and this, right. And I have a reason for that. And I've listened to thousands and thousands of idea pitches. And I, I know ideas that can be good business opportunities and ideas that can't. And so I'll tell them that. And I say, but if they have an interesting one, I'll also sometimes say, don't quit your job yet. You don't have to quit your job to do the first part of startup entrepreneurship, which is validation phase. So you can validate while still keeping your job. And validation is a series of interviews and going to the target market and finding out if you're on the right track with your business model. Okay. And you don't have to be 100% full time to do that. Because uh, you may discover in the first week or two that your idea sucks as a far as becoming a business model. There's many, many great ideas that are terrible business opportunities because you can't create, capture, and deliver value. And, you know, that's consumer products situations happen that way. You know, mm -hmm. um, with consumer products, if you don't have good unit economics, you may find out in just one or two weeks that, oh, uh, I can only sell this thing for $200, but it cost me $125 to manufacture. Well, I need 4X unit economics. $125 landed product needs to sell for $500 minimum, or I don't have a business. So these are issues that need to be addressed early, and you shouldn't quit your job over a wild, crazy idea that you haven't vetted through good early validation. Now, if it is time to quit your job and go 100% all in, then there's lots of other mistakes you can make. And usually in the area of premature scaling, mm -hmm. where you're going to go rent office space. Premature scaling is expensive. Expensive. Renting office space before you need it, uh, hiring salespeople before you need salespeople, putting together PR and marketing and fancy logos and spending lots of money before you need it. All these different issues that can happen that you are spending because it feels good to do exciting things like that, sitting in in front of your computer and mm -hmm. feel like an entrepreneur when really at this stage, you should be talking to prospective customers and users and finding out how you can meet their needs and give them and deliver value to them. But shouldn't I like create a really cool t-shirt before I do that? <laughs> no. Get some nice uh, <laughs> custom branded hats. Yeah. The, it's, it's feels so good to be doing things like that because it feels cool and makes you feel like an entrepreneur. And sadly, in our own community here um, and across the country and the globe, there's lots of entrepreneurs sitting in their apartments, in their cubicles somewhere, feeling like an entrepreneur because they're doing these silly activities that have nothing to do with really- What's a silly activity? Um, like- Solitaire? Taking three Sudoku. weeks, choosing what colors should be in my logo, okay, before I've even interviewed any prospective customers or users for my idea. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Okay. So funny story about one of my businesses, Fluent Code. So how much were we doing? We were doing like 50000 a month in revenue, and our website literally was a white background and just Fluent Code with, you know, one like Fluent was 
not in like just like a thin font mm -hmm. and code was in bold and that was it mm -hmm. and like my team in india is like john we have to be look more professional i'm like why like we without spending yeah, having t-shirts and business cards we were able to get clients you found a business model yeah you have found a customer who need, had a need to be filled mm -hmm. and you were filling that need and finding those customers and generating revenue that's much more important than designing a website a logo or sending out a press release, et cetera. Um, and this is something I like to share and just make sure most of the failure in entrepreneurship can be avoided by focusing on customers and users and finding out what they want before you go spend time and money and squander it on all these ancillary activities. When the timing is right, those activities will be right. It's not wrong to do those activities. This is why my Startup Ignition Bootcamp has a slogan, doing the right things in the right order. Mm -hmm. Because doing the right things out of order is what causes problems. Yeah, so when, when you and I used to hang out with the Utah Angels, that was an investment group, mm -hmm. Greg Warnock made a comment that like stuck with me forever. And he says, the question is like, do you need a logo to generate a sale? Do you need a business card to generate a sale? And I, th I see so many people who are like, oh, I need, you know, business cards or I need this and that. But really, like, you don't even need a website to generate a sale. And you've just made me think of something I really want to share. And I don't know okay. how much more time you have, but I'm going to share this. And I have people I talk to like this and they go, and they come back to me and go, John, I am not, you know, I'm, my idea is a B2B SaaS company, but I'm having the hardest time in the world going and talking to those customers and getting an appointment past the gatekeeper and being able to talk to the decision maker to even ask them if, if my idea or my business model that I'm hypothesizing is really real, is good, is going to work. And so I just want to go forward and do this. I'm going to get a coder and just build it. And I go, wait a minute. So you're saying you're having a hard time to get with the decision maker who's going to make a purchase decision on your software in the future. And you can't get an appointment to just mm -hmm. discuss the idea, not even a sales appointment. And you can't find people to validate with. If you can't find enough people to validate with, how are you ever going to get in the door to make a sale? So let's back up and rethink this. And that is a real eye opener for a lot of entrepreneurs realizing, yeah, if they can't get in and even talk to decision makers about the concepts mm -hmm. of their proposed business model or company, then how are they ever going to get in the door to make a sale? Is the most, ex <laughs> so the, is the most expensive decision in your, in your mind is that they're built, they're spending a lot of money building out product, building code where they've never validated it. Yes. Yeah. There's been a massive research study called the startup genome project. And one mm -hmm. of the findings, there's a lot of findings in it is they found out the successful ventures. They followed something like 12,000 ventures from start to finish. Finish could be bankruptcy and insolvency and failure mm -hmm. or an exit and success. And so they followed. And one of the greatest interesting differences between a company that practices good lean startup validation and one that goes in wildly into premature scaling is that in the early first stages, the company writing more lines of code looks more successful to the outsider because they're building a product. Mm -hmm. And so they've written way more lines of code in the validation phase, but then in the growth and building infrastructure phase, the real business phases, their code writing goes down because they're failing and losing money mm -hmm. and cash flow and can't afford coders. While the companies that spent way less time writing code at the beginning, they're now flourishing. And there's tons of uh, research upon this. It's it, you know it, we can't argue with it anymore because it's just it's quantified in a massive research study. So you're telling me I should go build code without talking to clients. And I should go get an expensive logo. <laughs> no, got it. <laughs> yeah, no. If if you want to, uh, a year from now, be at the exact same place you are today. How, what, what are the what are the horror stories? How much money have you seen people sink into a product? That okay. I have this all the time. All Do right. you want, you want yeah. me to tell you some horror stories? Okay, so I go to uh, a restaurant and meet. I, this happens all the time with me. And usually because they're saying, John, you got to help me find a tech co-founder. I can't, I got it. This is wrong. What I've been doing. Apparently this is no joke. I usually when I meet with an entrepreneur or entrepreneurial team that 
is in the process of throwing away their code and now going to go and build new code now mm -hmm. because their first business model didn't work with the code and they usually they tell me forty to eighty thousand dollars. Okay. I've seen as low as fifteen hundred, mm -hmm. but that's not that big of a problem. But forty eighty is pretty significant. But I also have sat down for lunch and so okay for me to help you and mentor you a little bit i need to know what have you spent so far you're saying that you've gone through four iterations of this and you have no tech person right now but what have you spent so far and i usually am expecting oh this they seem like it's bad maybe this one's going to be over eighty thousand dollars and this is a few months ago i was at uh uh at chinese restaurant with okay. these people and um and they wouldn't tell me for 20 minutes at the lunch and i'm finally going okay Seriously, I need to know. I, I just need to know the context and what's going on. And they didn't want to tell me. I said, just tell me. And they finally told me. 385,000. Oh, wow. 385,000. Okay. And, and no sales? Even I gulped a little and had to take a sip of my uh, Coke Zero. Okay. <laughs> to gain my composure after hearing that uh, 385,000 was spent. Nothing to show for. And no revenue. No revenue. Because <laughs> for the, yeah. You, think about that. Because, I mean, an MVP, you could get out what in your mind i mean technically if you have a, a tech co-founder other than server costs yeah but uh, john you might remember from our history together because mm -hmm. you and i've started things together that I, I don't know if you remember the story but there was a business coming off of the university where you and i were affiliated with and uh there was a great young entrepreneur that went out and got bids on building a platform and the bids were all over the place. We got a bid for five hundred thousand, a bid for three hundred thousand, a bid for one hundred twenty-five thousand. And by being a good shopper, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of funny. I find that entrepreneurs will spend three months looking at consumer reports to make a six hundred dollar refrigerator decision, but they'll go in and just wildly spend on writing software code mm -hmm. or wildly spend money with attorneys setting up all the documents for a business they haven't even validated. Mm -hmm. But uh, this young man, he got it done for about. $15,000 where he was getting all these high bids okay. and he just was smart and was a good shopper and got to a uh, MVP so he could generate revenue on mm -hmm. that amount. Right. It's just, that's you are, and yeah. I've known you for a lot of years and I would count you as one of my mentees. Okay. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I've been a good mentor. You've been a great you. mentor. You've been a great mentor. Yeah. And you've been that way. You're very smart and savvy and shop really well and make good decisions and don't squander and waste resources. Squandering and wasting resources looks cool if a company has raised a lot of money, but mm -hmm. you know, we see companies all the time that raise a lot of money and then end up not. I mean, I hate to say it, even in our own community here, there's many investors that got in on companies and these companies look really cool, but those investors are underwater. The, it's worth mm -hmm. less than what they invested at, even though the company looks cool from the yeah. outside. Yeah. How is a uh, how will COVID change any of this? Because it's going to be harder to it's going to be harder to get market validation. Yeah, COVID is just it's unpredictable what we're doing right now. Because this, you know, I've been through a lot of downturns, economic, and this one's so strange and different. I don't know where this is going to lead to and how long it's going to take to come out. I do know that smart winners will emerge well if you are smart and are careful with your resources and when we come out of this you'll flourish if you don't watch your cash flow and don't safeguard your time and are wasteful with time and resources then that's going to be a problem mm -hmm. but um, as far as COVID and getting with people, that's obviously makes it tough right now, you know, uh, social distancing and different things. But I think we're coming to that soon. Hopefully, you know, society can't go too much longer, we don't think, mm -hmm. in having these type of things happen. Because, you know, business still boils down to one human meeting with another human to conduct business, you know, and certainly at the earliest stages. I mean, we think about all the e-commerce businesses and how we transact so much online without touching each other. Mm -hmm. But all of those companies, the Netflixes, the Amazons, the Googles, and all of these, underneath all of that are massive numbers of humans transacting with each other to get it going. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. got to happen. I hope that helped. I yeah. don't have any magical answers. I wish I did. All right. Well, thank you so much. Make sure you uh, leave a comment for what you'd like to see next or, you know, give us a like, or if you're listening to us on a podcast, there's, you know, give us a great six-star review on either Spotify or iTunes or 
whatever you listen to. Thank you, John. And thanks for all the good work you're doing for the entrepreneurial community. Yeah. And thanks for your time. Thanks. All right.